Amen, and thank you, Carol. And thanks be to God for God's word. So, as we are looking at the two greatest commandments, we've been looking down a little bit. We had a great break from that last Sunday as we celebrated the ministry of Sunday school and Wednesday night. But we're back to it this Sunday, and we looked at what it means, the first commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If we really want to put that first commandment into practice, I mean, really want to do that, if we want to get beyond just being religious, then to love God with everything I have, my soul is everything I have, it's what I stand for, it's, it's the character of what I believe, then I must apply that second commandment. That's the hard one. Love my neighbor. I love the way Jesus puts it, too. He says, love my neighbor. Well, I got some pretty sweet neighbors. I mean, I really do. They're, they're easygoing people. They get along with them. They're, you know what? They're easy to love. But we all know what that really means, don't we? It doesn't mean pick and choose who we love. It means that everybody's our neighbor. And that's where it gets really, really difficult. And I'm just being honest. There are people in all of our lives that are difficult to love. And that's what I want to look at. On that note, I think we should pray. Gracious Lord, we're going to look at some tough stuff. And that's loving people. Lord, as human beings created with your character, with your love, people can consume the energy in their lives. They consume us dry because they take so much energy. We know that, Lord. You know that. You experienced it firsthand. So, Holy Spirit, as we look at some tools to help us with that, help us know we're, we're not going to be perfect, but your grace is going to help us figure it out. And help us try to apply that, not all at once, because it is difficult to love people. But help us try to apply that this week, in Jesus' name. Lord, let the words of my mouth not be distracted. But centered on the Holy Spirit. So with gratitude and expectation, let me hear you and let us hear you. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. Amen. And so to love God with, with all your soul <clears throat> means that we must love others. Because it's something we believe and stand for. And there are people in our life that are easy to love. In fact, there's people in my life, and probably yours too, that I kind of want to aspire to. I mean that. They just are always glowing. You know what I'm talking about. It's difficult to find them upset. And it's like, man, I want to be like her. Or I want to be like him. He's got that trait that is just always glowing. And those are the ones we want to hang around with. But then... <laughs> There's ones that are just difficult to love. I mean, you can smile at them all you want, and they look at you and say, why are you in my life? And then they want you in your life, but they don't want you in the life the way you want to be in the life. They're just, they're energy consuming. It's hard to, to find it. I, I can almost look at God, and I can look at him looking down at us at times saying, man, it's hard to find good help these days. Let me see if I can illustrate how hard it is to, to find people that just really want to love God with their whole soul. I was on a softball team, a church softball team, as a matter of fact, and, and we were having difficulty fielding the, the game that night. We didn't have enough people show up to, to, to put in the whole outfield. And one of the young people showed up at the last minute. We thought, how oh, right, now we got a center, a center fielder. And this young man comes in, I'm not making this, he's got ear things in his ear, you know, ear plugs in his ear, attached to his phone. He comes in, I'm here to play. Okay, where do you want me to play? The bench? No. He didn't say bench, but it almost might as well. So no, out in, the, out in center field, the coach said, okay. 
I said, are you going to not listen to your phone? Oh, I'll be okay. Seriously. <laughs> you need a, a, a softball mitt? Oh, yeah. He goes and gets the softball. Not me. He gets the softball. He goes out there. We're looking at each other going, oh, boy, this is going to be a real winner. <laughs> he gets out there. Sure enough, about the second inning, a ball is hit to center field. This is what he does. So he just, well, I, excuse me, we looked at him. We watched him. He just watched the ball. <laughs> I am not making this up. Right field and left field are converging on this poor boy. <laughs> he comes in. My, my coach looks at me. He says, well, what you see is what you get. <laughs> It is hard to find good help, isn't it? But sometimes that's what it's like when it comes to Christianity, isn't it? I mean, we know what it means to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We know that. And we have good intentions. We do. We have really good intentions. But then God puts this person in our life or this group of people in our life and we're like, really, I gotta love him or I gotta love her? And, and God looks at you and says, yes. And you're like, no. Have you met him? He's a mess, man. When he comes to you, he just consumes everything around you. God, you know when he walks in the room, everything just changes. Do I have to love him? Yes. That's the tough part about separating what it means to be religious and what real Christian faith is. Religion simply says, you know what? I'm going to take you as a project and give you to somebody else. Because you are too difficult to love. Christianity says, i got to find a way to love this person. I had a young lady, she's not young, she's actually a pillar in the church. She's passed on now. She's gone to heaven. But over at Litchfield United Methodist, used to pastor there. And when I was younger, she told me, she taught me this prayer, and I, I will never forget it. Because I began to realize at a young age, people are difficult to love. They are. I'm difficult to love at times. Uh, you don't all need to raise your hand. To tell me <laughs> I'm sure you got your reasons. <laughs> Take it easy now. <laughs> But she looked at me, and, and I was struggling with a person younger in ministry, and she just said, when I have a person like that, Pastor, I have this prayer. And she said, Lord, teach me to love those who are difficult to love. I thought, wow. Honesty is the best policy sometimes, God. And so we're going to look at that. Just remember that prayer. Lord, teach me to love those who who are difficult to love. James gives us some lessons on how to do that. He really does. That's why I took this scripture way back last January when I was doing sermon planning retreat. That's why I took this scripture. Just some lessons. You know, loving the people that are genuinely happy and get along with, that's fine. That's great. We got them in our life. But then there's those others. You know who I'm talking about. And we're going to look at some ways to just kind of help with that. The first is patience. Loving, difficult people takes patience. Any of you parents, don't raise your hand. Your kids are sitting right next to you. Okay? But you know what it means to have patience with their children in parenting. You got it, right? I mean, that, that takes a lot of patience. I remember one time when I was in middle school... It was April, and we all wanted to go down to the Mississippi River, about three or four of my friends and I, and we were going to ride our bikes. We lived about three blocks from the river, south of Lake Street, man. We were going to ride our bikes, and I looked in the garage, and my bike had a flat tire, but my dad's bike was working great. He was at work. I thought, great, I'll just take his bike, right? So I took his bike down to the river, met my friends. We locked him up around a tree, and we went around, and I'm not going to tell you why, but a fire started, a little grass fire. Don't worry about why, okay? That's, that's another patient sermon. But anyway, the grass fire happened to start by where our bikes were locked up. I got my bike, or my dad's bike, unlocked just in time for it to kind of melt. I'm not making this up. I watched the pedals just kind of, do you know plastic melts in fire? Just kind of melted. 
The rim just kind of folded. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Loving people takes patience. I'm not making this up. So I walk the bike home. I'm walking down the alley towards the garage. It's now 6 o'clock at night. My dad's working in the garage. He comes and he looks at my, his bike. It's all melted. You know what he did? Seriously, I'll never forget this. We talk about it to this day. He said, Evan, he looked at me and he goes, why did you take your bike? My tire was flat. <laughs> he looked at me and he started repeating things in German and he walked down the alley. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Seriously. Because he told, he told mom that night at dinner. I said, what'd you say? He goes, don't worry about it. <laughs> Put the bike in the garage. Patience is about loving people. That's a true story, by the way, and I had to pay the price for the bike, so don't worry about that. But to this day, I don't know what he said in German. Anyway, <laughs> patience. What does James say when if people are difficult to love? Be patient, therefore. And I love the word beloved. You know what that means? Beloved means you are saved by grace, by a God who will never stop loving you. He calls us beloved. Isn't that interesting? In this passage, he said, be patient, therefore, beloved. Those of you that know what it means to be saved by grace, always having heaven as an eternal hope, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. And some of you know this a lot better than I do. You're true farmers. I grew up in the cities. A farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient in, with it until it receives the early and late rains. You know how the farmer plants in early April and then gets that perfect rain right about the end of April after the seeds are planted. Everything's looking good, cultivated, fertilized. Everything's going good, but the rains aren't coming. What does the farmer do? I've been through this before. It'll be okay. Then July comes, no rain. I've been through this before. It'll be okay. You know the farmer. And then all of a sudden, it finally rains in August, but instead of raining, it hails. The farmer says, it'll be okay. And somehow... October, when that harvest is produced, there's enough money to pay the bills in the operating loan and make it. In spite of the drought, in spite of the hail, be patient. That's what it takes to love people. You want to love the difficult? Learn patience. Pray for patience. You want to love the difficult? Talk to parents. And children, that doesn't mean you're difficult. I'm just saying that parents understand Patience. Young people, as you get older, you're going to see that in your parents. They understand what it means to be patient. We want to learn to be real Christians. We want to learn to take that second commandment that's so hard to do. Be patient. What does it mean to love those who are difficult to love? We're going to suffer. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We will suffer. If we want to apply that as Christians and get beyond religious habits, we will suffer. If we want to love those who are difficult to love, we better plan on suffering. We'll make it. It's part of being a Christian. Remember when James wrote this book to the New Testament churches? They were under daily persecution. Christians were dying in the Roman Empire for their faith. What did Jesus say? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. What did Jesus say? Love your neighbor. Did he define who that was? No. By the way, a side note here. This doesn't mean that we're doormats. Don't confuse suffering with being a doormat for someone. When someone is all over us and then they want to use us again, we look at them and we say, I love you, but I'm not going to be your doormat. You know what I'm talking about. But I do love you. As an example of suffering in patience, there's that word again, be loved. As an example of suffering and patience for those of you that know what it means to be saved by grace and have eternal life, take the prophets. He's talking about the Old Testament prophets, James is. Specifically Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, he was called to tell Israel as a nation to come back to the center of being Christ-centered as a nation and not get so far away from God. 
That's a whole other message because we're dealing with that in America. And, he, and Jeremiah gave his life to that message. He went to prison for that message, not making this up. Jeremiah suffered hunger strikes for that message. He suffered a lot physically, not just emotionally. The prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord, indeed we call blessed. Lord, teach me to, to love those who are difficult to love, suffering. If you want to do that, it's going to require some suffering. Those who show endurance. If you want to understand this suffering, you talk to a parent who is raising a young adult recovering from drug addiction. Some of you probably know what I'm talking about firsthand. And what it means to love them after they relapse. And what it means to love them after they relapse again. And what it means to say, I love them and I'm suffering with them and I'm not going to give up because they are my child. That's suffering. Some of you can say firsthand, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. A friend of mine, a young man, they were married for about eight years and his spouse ended up with an addiction. She went into recovery and relapse, went into recovery and relapse, and went into recovery and relapse. After the third time of relapsing, he was in my office, and he and I were praying, and I said to him, I love you, and I love your spouse, but i got to ask this. What keeps you from leaving her? And he looked at me tearfully, and he said, because I love her. And I said, till death do us part. Got a good ending. They are happy now. She has been in recovery for at least 10 years and growing. But they suffer. Don't think they didn't suffer because they understood what it means to love your neighbor and loving those who are difficult to love. This is what it's really about. Now, let's just be genuinely honest here. There are certain people that when Jesus said, love your neighbor, love everyone, that's hard. I don't know if I can do that. i got to be brutally honest. I have a hard enough time loving my friends, and God wants me to love my enemies. This is one of the biggest things that Christianity is the hardest to make it. You know, we've got all the morality issues out there that the world is constantly dealing with. That's not going to change. The Bible is very clear about what is moral and what is immoral. But this right here, loving your neighbor, this is the biggest thing the church uh, continually battles with. We, we're not good at this, including myself. This is If, if we could love people like Jesus... People would be flocking to come to God's church. Because what do people really want? What's the core thing they want? We just want to be genuinely loved. So this takes a lot of work. It takes a lifetime of being committed to following God. It doesn't mean we're going to be a doormat. It just means it takes a lot of work. This is one of the hardest principles, if not the hardest principle, to apply to our Christian life. You know, the morals of the Bible, it's a lot easier than loving our neighbor. It really is. Because people are difficult to love at times. But here's the end of it. Tough love that requires patience, requires suffering. It ends with blessing. Let me see if I can help you out here. I know this may shock you a little bit, but I wasn't the, 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 the greatest teenager to love. I required patience. I required suffering. And yet, certain people, including my parents, they stuck with me. And they allowed me to, to move on in life. And eventually, things got turned around. And blessings began to happen. But that took a lot of time. You don't believe me. Talk to my mother. She's over in Corona's Manor. I'm sure she'll be able to tell you. She was at the nursing home service this week. She told some of the residents how tough I was to love. 
but it takes blessings that come out of it. You know what's so cool about this? We are a church that sends people to Coronas Ministries and other camps. And we're going to have a list of them put up by next week. There's a lot. 15 kids going to camp this summer or more. You know what happens when we send them to camp? We're help paying, the, paying their way to camp. Not all of it, but we're paying their scholarship funds to camp. You know what happens? They go to Coronas Ministries. They ask Jesus in their heart. And, and not just as a habit because it's the right thing to do. They do it because they genuinely want to. And their lives get changed. Forever. They go home a changed person. And they understand purpose and meaning and the gift of eternal life and what grace is. And you know what happens? They become adults. And they start working in the church. Full time. We are a church that builds our, or, or buys a house by the middle school, high school called the U Zone. And we, we heat it, we, we take care of it, we make sure it's presentable, we put staff in it, and we get kids that come to it that aren't in all the extracurricular activities. So they come after school instead of going to sports. And you know what? They're lonely. And they want a safe place to land. And they want to be loved. And they grow up. I've been here long enough to see some of them move from from ninth grade to 12th grade now. They go to the Uzo. And they find a place where they can be loved. Like a beloved is loved. And you know what happens as they get older? I understand statistically it's not 100%. But you know what happens as they get older? They get blessed by God. And they find out what real peace is. Not world peace, but shalom, inner peace. Tough love begins with blessings. It takes patience. And it takes suffering. You don't believe it? Just talk to James. And I know you believe it. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. The Old Testament book of Job. A man who had everything taken away from him. He suffered dearly. He lost his ranch. He lost his family members. He had an illness. And his friends looked at him and said, Why don't you just curse God and die and get it over with? And Job said, Never. Because he had patience and he was willing to suffer. What does James say? You've heard of the endurance of Job. Don't think they have it in the New Testament. And you have seen the purpose of the Lord. How the Lord is compassionate and merciful. And you and I are given some simple lessons on what it means to love those who are difficult to love. Now, you know what happens? We have to choose today. Am I going to be religious? Put it on the shelf? Or am I going to say to God, I'm going to try to be a Christian today. Saved by your grace. I get to go to annual conference this week. I get to have patients sitting in meetings all day long. And listen to people. Am I going to be religious? Or am I going to be a Christian? Lord, teach us to love those who are difficult to love. Amen. I'm going to ask you to join me in, in a time of prayer. Gracious Lord, this goes so much further than just the neighbors. We understand that loving everyone is impossible but with your grace and with Christ, all things are possible. We understand that our world has people that we want to be like, we aspire to, because they're so genuine. And our world also has people that consumes energy. Lord, help us have patience. Help us know we're going to suffer. 
Help us know that everybody in our world, including ourselves, are beloved. I understand it's not going to be easy. I understand we're not going to be perfect at it in any sense of the word. But the few that are in our little world, Lord, that are difficult to love, teach us to be loved. We lift this genuine and hard prayer to you. We know your grace is huge. It's never ending. It's on our side. Give us the strength to be patient and suffer in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. Now, as we dwell on this thought to the gift of music, we have the opportunity.